Hi everyone and welcome back to the discussion about the graph of trigonometric function sine and cosine. So in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to have more examples on how to graph a sine function. Last time when I upload this one, uh, to be particular, how to graph a sine x here, it's, it took like 48 minutes long if, if I remember correctly or 40 plus minutes at least. So here I explained it, explain it in detail how and why all right so here maybe in terms of explanation i'm going to lessen it because what we're going to do is we're just going to go direct to the point like follow the steps and let's graph it out all right so now what we without further ado let's now begin okay so first things first like in all cases when it comes to graphing a trigonometric functions always remember you need to know your C and D. Remember that, okay? Remember your C and D, which is here, okay? In this uh, uh, formula for your sine function, okay? Uh, I think that's general formula or standard. But yeah, remember, know your C and D, okay? So in this case, uh, you see here it's not visibly given, okay? It's not visibly given. And likewise, for your d d acts like as a constant term you know for for uh for a sine function so since c and d are not visibly given we can clearly say that d and c are both zero okay and what would be our interpretation if our d and c is zero or in this case it's not visibly given then that means there is no horizontal and vertical movement. Okay? Remember that. There is no vertical and horizontal movement. Okay. Let me just shrink it here. Okay. Number two. So here in your next step, I do believe is you're going to find the amplitude. Okay? The amplitude and the period all right remember in getting the amplitude it's just the coefficient of your sine function all right but despite its sign whether if it's positive or not it should always be positive remember okay amplitude is the coefficient of the given sine function and it should be positive so in this case we have two as a coefficient for your sine x so therefore your amplitude would be positive two all right then next i okay, this is your amplitude let's find your period so for your period remember the formula that period is uh well, period is what was it again I, I kind of forgot yeah there we go is two pi all over b so <clears throat> Basically, we're going to divide 2 pi by b. Now, where is b if you're asking? It's basically the coefficient of your x in the sign. So here, since it's not visibly given, that means there actually exists a coefficient. It's just that it's invisible. All right? And that is 1. Okay? So in this case, your period is 2 pi. Okay, that's it. Now, for your 3, is I do believe is we're going to find the key points. Am I right? Yeah, we're going to find the key points. Okay. Let me just, uh, for a sign, let me just give some space here below. All right? For a while. Okay, I'm back. So let's do this. Let's find the key points. So here, of course, in finding the key points, you will always start at the first key point. Okay, in the first key point, First and foremost is you're going to focus what is the x, okay? What is the x of your first key point, okay? What's your x in the first key point, all right? So how to get the x of the first key point? Just simply equate what's inside of your sine function to zero and find zero. I mean, find, I mean, solve for x, all right? So in this case, we have x here, right? So we will have as a result x then is equal to zero. Then solve for x. 
in here we have nothing to do anymore because here we already solved for x which is zero and that would be our x uh that would be our x for our first key point which is zero okay so what's next in that case now that you you found your x as zero you're going to substitute it in this function all right so that we can get its y value or output rather if your input is x so we will have y is equal to sine of zero. Oh wait sorry it's two times sine of zero so two times sine of zero what does it mean so here sine zero is zero so two times zero will give you zero hence your first key point is zero zero all right that's one okay now let's find the other key points remember there are five key points all right now let's go to the second key point now for your second key point uh second third fourth and fifth key point what you're going to do is that you have to relate the previous or recent x value you found with the period because here if you're going to find the what is one the second uh the x value of your second key point third key point fourth key point and fifth key point the first thing that you will you need to do is that first is you're going to uh, divide your period by four okay that's the first thing you have to divide your period by four so right we have two pi all over four so this can be simplified because 2 pi and 4 are both divisible by 2. So 4 divided by 2 is 2. And 2 pi divided by uh, 2 is simply pi. So therefore, you have pi all over 2. So in this case, you're going to use this one for what? Okay. So here, if you're going to find your x, uh, x value for your second point, all you need to do is you add the recent x by pi all over 2. So therefore, here we have 0. So we will have 0 plus pi all over 2. And that's it. Okay? And your x would be pi all over 2. Now what's next? You're going to substitute that x to the given sine function for you to find its output. So we will have 2 times sine of pi all over 2. Remember that sine pi all over 2 is basically the same as sine of 90 degrees. And sine of 90 degrees is just basically 1. So we have 2 times 1, so the answer is 2. Hence, you have pi all over 2 and 2. That's it. That's for your second key point. Now, we will do the same thing for your third, fourth, and fifth key point. All right, so first and foremost, all right, for your x, just copy the recent x value you found which is pi all over 2, then add it with uh, the result you found by dividing the period by 4. So here you will have plus pi all over 2. So pi all over 2 plus pi all over 2 will give you exactly pi. Then substituting it to the given sine function, so 2 times sine of pi. So sine of pi is just 180 degrees, I mean sine of 180 degrees. So that would be just simply zero. So zero is your answer. So you get pi and zero. That's it. So these are your first three key points. We're going to find the other one. So with that, let me just erase the solutions here, except the key points. Okay. So okay, your first key point is simply zero zero. Then your second key point here. Let me just remove it. So this is pi all over two two. Then for your third key point, that would be just pi zero. Okay, there we go. So what's next? Now for your fourth key point, we will do the same thing as what we did to the third and second key point. For your x, okay, we're going to add pi all over 2 with the recent x value found, which is pi. Right, so pi plus pi all over 2. So in this case, this would be 2 pi plus pi, 3 pi, right? 3 pi all over 2. That is the x of your fourth key point. Then substituting it to your given sine function, 2 times sine of 3 pi all over 2, that's basically uh, 2 times sine of 270 degrees. 
So it's negative 1. So 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. So you have 3 pi all over 2 and negative 2. That's a fourth key point. And lastly, for your fifth key point, okay, we'll do the same thing. Add 2 pi all over 2 by 3 pi all over 2. So let me write it down. Then combine them both will give you 2 pi. So finding its y value, 2 times sine of 2 pi will give you 0. Because sine of 2 pi is basically 0. So 2 times 0. So 0. So you have 2 pi and 0. That's it. So here you have already found your fourth and fifth key point. All right, let me just bring it down here and copy this. Okay, we're good to go. Oh, wait, oh, let me just erase this. Okay, we're good to go. That's it. Okay, um, in terms of this, though, um, I'm just going to put it up. All right, I'm just going to put it up. All right, now, for the fourth step is you will uh, plot, I mean, you're going to trace the key points. So in this moment, you're going to graph them out. All right? So let me start by drawing a graph here. And then a line here. Okay, there we go. Okay. So let's put the integers first. So here on the x-axis, my integers would be based from pi all over 2. Basically, the common difference or the distribution is that the common difference is you will have pi all over 2. So that means if, if I start at 0 here, which is at the origin, if you see the red dot here, okay? So next step is you're just going to add pi all over 2. So 0 plus pi all over 2 is just pi all over 2. Pi all over 2 plus pi all over 2, that will give you just uh, pi. Then continuously added with pi all over 2 will give you 3 pi all over 2. Then this will give you 2 pi. And then so on and so forth. Let's, 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 let's uh, extend it. So 2 pi plus um, pi all over 2. So, four, so 5 pi. 5 pi all over 2. What's next after 5 pi all over 2? 3 pi, right? am I right? Yeah, 3 pi. Okay. What, one more. Sorry, guys, if it takes time. I'm actually make, uh, putting all the integers first. So 3 pi plus pi all over 2, that would be um, 6 pi plus 7. So 7 pi all over 2. Yeah, yeah okay. I think we're going to stop right there. Then we will do the same. We will do the same thing to the left, but uh, it's in negative. So negative pi all over two, negative pi, negative three pi all over two, negative two pi. This is negative three pi all over two. No, wait. That's five pi. Wait. Right, let me just 5 pi all over 2. And then what's next? Hold on, hold on. And then negative 3 pi. That's it. Then for your y axis, um, let's just say we, we're just going to put until 4. So here we will have 1, 2, 3. That's it. So here we will have 1, 2, oh wait, negative 1, sorry. All right, so we have negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and negative 4. I think this is enough, right? So here, let's now plot, okay? So 0, 0. So 0, 0 is just at the origin, so no changes. So it's here. Next, pi all over 2, then 2. So pi all over 2, 2 is here and here. So plotting them, it's here. All right, next, we have pi 0. So 
since it's just pi and then the y is zero so that means it's on the x-axis it's here next is 3 pi all over 2 negative 2 so 3 pi all over 2 negative 2 so plot them will give you the sorry my messenger the next is we have last but not the least 2 pi 0 so 2 pi 0 so y is 0 that means it's just on the x-axis so it's here that's it okay, it's here okay now uh we cannot trace them okay so start from here go up then down down and up okay then we can extend it that's the last step of the graphing extend so in extending just follow the pattern okay at the beginning you start at the middle then the next uh next uh yeah next x value you're gonna go up the next x value you're gonna go down on the axis the next value you're going to go down again the next value you're gonna go on the middle again all right that's a pattern so we can repeat it one more time so since we're here already okay, we're here already so what we're going to do is we're going to go up all right just make sure that uh the height of you going up or down is basically from here okay like until i do believe negative two and two all right so let's follow the pattern for the next step i'll go up so like these the next step going down next step going here and the next step going back again here okay here you can put an arrowhead okay so the same way to the left so to the left we're going to do it in opposite because right we start from like this then up then middle, then down, then middle, right? Now we're going to do it in reverse way, like middle, down, middle, up, then middle, okay? So basically it's like, like this, down, middle, up, middle, right? That is what we're going to do. So in this case, all right, all right, we're going to do this, so we're going to go down. So down, to be particular, until at negative 2. Okay, so we go from here to here. Then going back to the middle, which is here. Then going up here. Then going down here. Then going down again here. I mean middle, then down. Then go middle then go up and here you can now stop here then put an arrowhead and that's it that is the graph of sine uh two sine x all right so remember that when you're uh, let's have some interpretation okay remember that when you have amplitude as two it implies that your graph stretches uh two units compare that to the previous graph we had right when we graph sine x look at the amplitude oh sorry look at the amplitude it's one right so meaning that the distance between the middle middle line and the maximum point and the distance between the middle line up to the minimum point is one unit long all right oh wait sorry yeah so it's one unit long so from here up to oh wait no wait here here sorry 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 to confuse you, but yeah. So from here up to there, it's one unit long. Okay, right, that's how far it is. Compare that here. Okay, from the middle line or the middle, yeah, middle line of the sine graph, from here up to up, it reaches a total of two units long. It reaches two units. Okay, so that means your graph stretches vertically two units long okay so yeah that's it um that's i think i do believe the that's the only interpretation i would like to say all right so yeah that is how what you, that's how you're going to do that let's try another example okay so here we have a few more actually not only these we have a few more okay let me put this down all right so okay we have negative four sine x 
Okay, wait for a moment. All right, I'm back. So let's begin. So first step is know the V, ah, the C and D. Okay, the C and D. Know that. So just like for our previous example, C and D are not given, visibly speaking. So therefore, D and C is zero. So that means there is no what. There is no uh, horizontal and vertical movement. Okay, no, ver no horizontal and vertical movement. Just in that position. I know adjustment horizontally or vertically. Okay, so that's the first step. Now let's proceed to the second step. So the second step here is, I was again, find the amplitude and period. So the amplitude here. Now take a look at this one. If you would notice, we have negative 4. Remember, again, the amplitude is always positive. Despite the sign, whether it could be positive or not, it should always be positive. So therefore, if we have negative 4, so therefore our answer is 4. It should always be positive. Now let me tell you one thing. All right, there's another thing that we're going to explain here. Your coefficient is negative. So what does it mean? If your coefficient is, um, coefficient for sine to be particular, it's negative. What does it mean? Okay. Since we have negative value besides sine function, okay, that means the graph will flip. Okay. The graph will flip flip what vertically or or horizontally vertically okay why flip vertically because you have what negative four remember negative sign indicates that your graph will flip okay your graph will uh, i mean you get what i mean it will flip vertically if and only if the coefficient is negative okay wait wait let me put it here okay because your coefficient is negative there you go okay because your coefficient is negative all right but again please um to find the amplitude just just make it positive all right so here, negative 4, so positive 4. That's it. Okay? But um, don't just simply disregard the negative sign, all right? We just simply disregard negative sign for you to get the amplitude, okay? It still has a meaning or interpretation. So the fact that it's negative, I already told you, the graph will flip vertically, okay? Don't forget that. Check, that, uh, check it down on your notes, all right? Or at least remember it in your mind. Okay, now we find the period. So how do you get the period? So in period, what is it again? It's 2 pi all over b. So here, um, your b here is 1. Remember, your b is the coefficient of your x inside the sine function. So it's simply 1, no changes. So just 1. So you have 2 pi. That's it. I think we're good to go. Now, the third step is you're going to find the key points, okay? So, let's start first with the first key point, okay? So, uh, I think I'm gonna, you know what, I'm just gonna bring them all down, right? I never thought that I need more spaces. But anyway, okay, so for your first key point, to find your x, what are you going to do? You're going to solve for x by how? By equating what's inside of your fine of your sine function to zero so since inside your sine function is x so you will have what x is equal to zero and solve for x now here we already solve for x because your x here is zero all right so basically we found already the value for your x so we're, we're already good to go now in that case we can now substitute it in where in the given function so you have y is equal to negative 4 
times sine of 0. So again, sine 0 is 0. So negative 4 times 0 is 0. Therefore, your first key point is simply 0, 0. Okay? Now, for your second key point here, if you remember what I said to you earlier, for you to find the second, third, fourth, and fifth key point, all you need to do is you're going to, okay, to find the x value for your second key point, add the previous x value, which is 0, by what? By dividing by a number that is basically your period divided by 4. Okay? So your period is what? 2 pi all over 4. So here, just like in the previous example, 2 pi all over 4 is just simply the same as pi all over 2. So you have 0 plus pi all over 2. So here, your x value is pi all over 2. That's it. Then, in this case, we're going to find your sine. So your sine here is negative 4 times sine of pi all over 2. So here, sine pi all over 2 is 1. So that means negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. So therefore, your key point, uh, for your, your key point, your second key point, I mean, is 2 pi all over 2 and negative 4. That's it. Now, we go for the third key point. For your third key point, okay, as, as always, add uh, the previous x value or the recent x value, which is pi all over 2 by pi all over 2. So pi all over 2 plus pi all over 2 will give you exactly pi. And substituting it here, okay, y is equal to negative 4 times sine pi, that will give you 0, all right? Remember, sine pi will give you 0, so 0 times negative 4, 0. So therefore, you have pi 0. That's it. Now, let's, all right, let, let's occupy the, the space here. All right, let's find the fourth key point, okay? So, as usual, add the, the recent x by, two, uh, by pi all over 2. So, we have pi, right? So, we have pi plus pi all over 2. So, this is basically 3 pi all over 2. And substituting it here, negative 4 times sine of 3 pi all over 2 will give you positive 4. Because remember, as I said earlier, Sine of 3 pi all over 2 is negative 1. So negative 4 times negative 1 will give you positive 4. So hence, you have 3 pi all over 2 and 4. Now we found the first four key points. All right, let's find the fifth key point after we um, erase the solutions here. Except the key points we found, right? So for your first key point, you have 0, 0. Second key point. That's basically 2 pi negative 4. Let me say here. Then for your third key point, that's basically pi 0. And lastly, for your fourth key point, that's basically 3 pi all over 2, 4. Yeah, that's it. Now for your fifth key point, all right, so To find your x value, just simply add the recent x by pi all over 2. So you have 3 pi all over 2 plus pi all over 2. So adding them together will give you exactly 2 pi. Then substituting it here, y is equal to negative 4 times sine of 2 pi will give you exactly 0. Because again, sine of 2 pi is 0. Alright, so therefore, what would be the answer? All right, so your fifth key point would be 2 pi 0. That's it. So we're good to go here. All right, we're good to go. Okay, so we found all the key points. So what's our fourth step? We trace them in the graph. So that means we're going to graph them. So let me just uh, put it here. Okay, we're just going to put it here. Okay, so let's graph them. All right, so this vertical line a ah, horizontal line then a vertical line here and i'm going to put the integers here for the x-axis where your common difference would be pi all over two all right so basically what you found here like when you divide period by four that would be oh wait sorry that would be our uh 
basis in inputting our uh, integers here. All right. So, uh, wait, let me zoom in. So, you start at zero. So, obviously, that's on the origin. So, zero plus pi all over two, it's simply here. Hold on. It's pi all over two. Sorry, there's like a fly crawling to my crawling on my hand. Okay, so pi all over two, then pi all over two plus pi all over two is pi. Pi plus pi all over two will give you three pi all over two. Three pi all over two plus pi all over two will give you two pi. Two pi plus pi all over two. Uh, I do believe it's just the same as here, right? Yeah, three pi. No, five pi all over two, right? 5 pi all over 2, and 3 pi all over 2, and what's next after 3 pi all over 2? 7 pi all over 2. That's it. All right, now we will do the same thing to the left, but we're doing it in negative way. So here we have negative pi all over 2. This is negative pi, negative 3 pi all over 2 negative 2 pi, negative 5, wait, negative 5 pi all over 2, and negative 5 pi, wait, no, negative 3 pi, that's it. Okay, then for your y-axis, um, since we have y as negative 4 and 4, let's make it until 5, all right? So we will have 1, 2, Three, uh, four, then five. Here, five. All right. So here we'll do it the same way, but negative. So negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five. Then we now start plotting it. Okay. So we have the first key point zero zero. So it's at the origin, which is at the middle. So that's one. Next, uh, pi all over 2, negative 4. So pi all over 2, negative 4. So it's here. There you go. Next, pi 0. So pi and then your y is 0. That means it's on the x-axis. So it's here. Right. Next, your 4 key point. 3 pi, all, 3 pi all over 2, 4. So 3 pi all over 2. Then here, 4. Plot it will give you here. And lastly, for your fifth key point, we have 2 pi 0. So again, when your y is 0, it's on the x-axis. That's it. Then you can trace them. So here, we go from the middle, then downward. Then go back to the middle. Then going up again. Then going up. Wait, hold on. Let me, let me fix that. Okay, there we go. Go and... Here, okay, that's it. Now we can trace them, okay? Just follow the pattern. So here, if you're going to observe, it's middle, down, middle, up, middle, all right? So that means, since you stop right here, the next step here would be, you're gonna go down, all right? So for your x value, you're gonna go down. Make sure you reach until the minimum point, which is, I do believe, it's, it's in negative four, in which it is. So Go down here, we'll give you at till, wait, no, no, until here, negative 4. Then go up in the middle, so here. Then go, then go up. All right, I do believe we're going to stop right here. All right, so here you can just put an arrowhead. All right, now we'll do the same thing to the left, but in reverse way. So if you would notice on the right side, right, it's middle down, middle, up, middle. So here we will do in opposite. So it's middle, up, middle, down, middle. All right, that is what we're going to do. So in this case, okay, here, so we will, so here we will go up. So until four, right? Until four maximum. So we'll go up. Okay, so we have four. Then go the middle, so we have negative pi. Then go down, we will we will have negative three pi all over two here. And that's it. 
and then go in the middle to pi then repeat the pattern again so we will go up up then down and we can stop right here right that's it and put an arrow head okay and that's it we're done we have done the five steps now as remember i told you when your coefficient is negative wait when your coefficient is negative what happened the graph will flip vertically now compare that to the previous examples the first example right take a look look at this one it's basically from wait it's basically from uh wait I, let me just change color all right from here all right then going up then going down uh middle then down right now let's take a look on our first example the one we just did earlier so middle down uh, up sorry up middle then down then middle right now compare that here compare that here we start on the middle then we go down then middle then we go up then middle so there is a flip of what of graph and that happens when again when the coefficient of your sine function is negative all right so yeah um that's basically it i think we have more examples that we can solve here all right how about this one this is actually interesting the fact that we have plus one here hmm all right so what are we going to do here okay so let me just put this down okay we're going to solve this one soon all right we're going to solve this one soon no wait i think that this would be the last example we're going to we're going to solve yeah, I mean, yeah, that, that, would, that would be the last example. Then the rest, we're going to solve like these complicated graphs. All right? So let's go. Let's graph this one. Y is equal to 1 half sine x plus 1. Okay, so here, first and foremost, know your what? D and C. Now, okay, C is the coefficient inside the sine, ah, coefficient, a constant term inside the sine function, and the D is a constant term in the whole expression. So here, your c here is not given so your c is zero but your d is given remember the d is a constant term of the uh, expression which is basically outside the sine function which is one okay which is one so your d here is one so what does it mean okay so when you say c is zero so that means there is no horizontal movement okay but now the fact that we have d given okay we have d given itself then that means then that means there exists a vertical movement okay a v movement there exists a vertical movement because your d is given okay so here's the thing if there exists a vertical movement what does it mean okay is it going to go you know upward or downward the fact that we have plus one it means that you're going to go one unit upward one unit up okay so again, to uh, let's, let's summarize again. C is zero, so there's no vertical movement, right? No vertical movement at all. Here, for your uh, D, it's given, which is one. So there exists a vertical movement, which is moving it up by one unit. That's it. Now, uh, I'm, just, I'm going to shrink this one. Let me shrink this because, yeah, we're going to need a lot of space. All right, so that's it. Now, number two, we need to know your amplitude. Your amplitude is easy. Again, it's basically the coefficient of your sine function. So here we have one half, and that is what you're going to put here. One half, that's it. Then your period is once again, what? Two pi all over B. 
And where's your b? The coefficient of x, which is 1. So we have 2 pi all over 1, so 2 pi. Good. That's it. Now, um, what's next? Yeah, third step is you're going to find the key point. Okay, so by finding your key points, what are we going to do? For your first key point, you're going to find your x by what? By equating what's inside of your sign to 0. So inside of your sign is x, right? So equate it to 0, you will get x is equal to 0. Then find for your x. In here, I think we already found our x, which is 0, all right? So therefore, your x is 0 for your first key point. Then substituting it in here in this function, given, which is y is equal to 1 half times sine of 0 plus 1. So remember, sine of 0 is 0, right? So 0 times 1 half is 0 plus 1, 1. So your first key point is 0, 1. That's it. Second key point, okay? So how to find the x for your second, third, fourth, and fifth key point? First, you need your recent, uh, recently found x, which is 0, right? So 0. Then add it with the value that you divide the period by 4. Okay, as always. For you to find the x value for the second up to the fifth uh, key point, you divide period by 4, then you're going to add it to the, uh, to the recently found x. So it's still 2 pi all over 4, and you know what's the simplified value of it. That would be pi all over 2. So you will have 0 plus pi all over 2. So you have pi all over 2. Then substituting it to your uh, given sine function, so you have, what's that again? 1 half times sine of pi all over 2 plus 1. So pi all over 2 as an input for your sine will give you 1, right? So 1 times 1 half, 1 half. 1 half plus 1 will give you 3 halves. So you will have pi all over 2, 3 halves. That's it. Then for your third key point, okay? Add the recent x value by pi all over 2. So it's pi all over 2 plus pi all over 2. That's it. So you will have x as pi. Then substituting it here, you will get 1 half times sine of uh, pi plus 1. So pi, sine pi is 0. So 0 times 1 half 0 plus 1 is just 1. So you will get pi and 1. I found already the first three key points. So let's find the others after we erase the solutions here, except the key points we found. So for our first key point, it's 0, 1. Second key point, it's pi all over 2 and 3 half. Okay. Then for your third key point, that's pi all over 2. Oh, wait, it's pi all over 1. Oh, my God. Sorry. Okay, let's find your fourth key point. Okay, to find your x value again, add the recent x by pi all over 2. So pi plus pi all over 2 will give you exactly 3 pi all over 2. Okay, and substituting it here. Wait, no. Oh, correct, correct. Right, right. Sorry, sorry. Then... Yeah, all right. Then substituting it here to your sine function, you will get 1 half times sine of 3 pi all over 2 plus 1. So sine of 3 pi all over 2, again, is negative 1. So negative 1 times 1 half will give you uh, negative 1 half. So negative 1 half plus 1 will give you 1 half. So that means your key points for your fourth key, I mean, for the coordinates of your fourth key point are 3 pi all over 2 and 1 half. And lastly, for your fifth key point, okay, your x here would be 3 pi all over 2 plus pi all over 2. That will give you 2 pi. And substituting it here, you have y is equal to 1 half times sine of 2 pi plus 1 
2 pi, sine of 2 pi is 0. 0 times 1 half is 0, plus 1, 1. So this is your fifth key point. And now that we found all the key points, we are now, uh, we can now, uh, what do you call this one? Erase the solutions and graph it out, which is basically the fourth step. All right, trace these uh, key points. Okay, so let me just draw a line here. All right, so we draw this one, and then we draw a vertical line here. There we go. All right. Okay, so here, since we st we have pi all over two when we divide period by four, that will be our basis in our uh, getting the integers in x value. So we will get from here zero. Zero plus one is pi all over two plus pi all over two. That would be just simple as pi. Then here, um, what's that again? Plus pi all over two will give you three pi all over two. Plus pi all over two, it's two pi. Plus pi all over two, what that will give you um uh, what's that again? After two pi. Yeah, 5 pi all over 2. Then what's next? That would be 3 pi. Then 3... No, wait. 3 pi, right? 3 pi. Then... Hold on. You know what? Let me just pause this one and let me just do it by my own. Alright? That's it. Alright, I already formed my horizontal... Ah, my integers for my x-axis. Now, for your y-axis, since we have 1, 3 halves, and 1 half, so I do believe I'm going to graph it out. I mean, I'm going to put my integers for y until uh, maybe uh, 3. Right, that, 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 that's enough. 1, 2, and 3. Right, I think I do believe it's three. Yeah, three, three. All right, so we have here negative one, negative two, and negative three. Then we wrap it out. All right, I mean, we plot first the key points, then we trace it. So here we have zero, one. Your x is zero, but your y is one. So that means your point is on the y axis, to be particular, at one. So it's here. I mean, that's that's one okay next two pi all over two three halves so we have pi all over two which is here when you say three pi uh three halves that's basically 1.5 so when you say 1.5 it actually exists between two and one like halfway to two basically so it's here all right this is 1.5 all right so you could say that this is actually smaller, but uh, let, let's just plug it anyway. So it's here, okay? The next, we have pi 1. So pi 1, so this is pi 1, so it's here. That's it. Then next, 3 pi all over 2, 1 half. So 3 pi all over 2, 1 half. 1 half is just another way of of saying 0 0.5 and if you're asking me where is 0 0.5 um when you say 0 0.5 it's basically um uh, between uh wait let me draw it. between 1 and 0 okay so meaning it's here okay right? midway to 1 so 0 0.5 exists midway before 1 so that means i will have the point here okay then last but not the least, oh wait, oh, it's a black eye. Right? Last but not the least, we have 2 pi 1. So 2 pi 1, so it's here. Then you trace it. So it would look like this. That's it. Okay, it's small, but um, that's the correct way for you to graph it. Then the last step is you extend it. Okay, you extend it. So here, we're going to extend it. Ah, why oh, is it black again? Oh, there we go. So if you're going to extend it, so as always, I follow the pattern. So here it's up, uh, middle, up, middle, down, middle. Okay. So for here, 
the next step is you're going to go up. Just follow, uh, just follow the maximum height, which is here, and the minimum height, which is here. So you will go up again, then middle, then down, then middle, then up. Right? Am I right? Yeah. I think I'm going to stop right here. So I'm just going to put an arrowhead. Now, on the left, okay, we're going to uh, expand it as well to the left. But since we're going to go to the left, so the pattern is in reverse. So instead of middle up, middle down, it's middle down, middle up, middle. So here, we go middle, then we go down. Right here. Then we go middle again. That's here. We go up. Here. Middle. Wait, am I right? Yeah. Then we go middle again here, then down, then middle, then you can, I mean, you can go up if you wanted to, but for me, I'm going to stop right here, right? So yeah, that's it. That is the graph of what? What's that again? One half sine x plus one. See, it's actually small, but that's the graph of sine. Now, if you're going to observe, compare that to the previous example. Let me just use a pink color. If you're going to observe, most of the graphs started at here, right? At the x-axis, right? To be particular at the origin, okay? Same thing here for our first example we did in this video here. And likewise, in our first video on how to graph, which is here, right? Now, compare that here. Here, you started at 1. Not at the origin, but one in the vertical axis. See, that means there, e there exists movement or shift, basically. You're going to move your graph at what? To one unit long. Okay? So, it states right here, okay? One unit upward. Okay? It makes sense, right? Number two, right, if you're going to observe, there, there's always a midline, right? In every graph, there's a midline. Here, the midline is on the x-axis, right? And just like for the previous examples we just made, uh, we just solved basically. Yes, it's on the x-axis. However, how about if it's not on the x-axis? So if you want to find the, mid, the middle line or midline on the, on the graph that it's not on the x-axis or along the x-axis, then just simply trace these middle points here. Just trace it, okay? So let me just draw it in a dotted line like that. That's it. That's it. So you see that pink dotted line? That is your midline. All right, that is your midline. Okay, that's it. Okay, then, okay, if you're asking me, well, how about you know the, uh, how about you relate the amplitude? So remember that your amplitude here is one half, right? So that means the distance between your midline up to the maximum point. Let me just change it to a right. Between here, the midline up to the maximum point and the midline up to the minimum point is one half long. Okay, it's one half long or 0 0.5 units long, which makes sense. Because remember here, this one is 1.5, right? It's basically between 2 and, two and 1. Now, remember that the midline is at exactly 1, right? It's exactly 1. Now, if you're going to get the difference between 1.5 and 1, 1.5 minus 1, the answer is 0 0.5, which is 1 half. So, it does make sense, okay? It does make sense that your amplitude is, in fact, 1 half, okay? So, point being... Uh, what I'm trying to say here is that amplitude is just getting the distance between the maximum and the maximum point and the midline between the maximum point and the midline and the distance between the uh, midline and the minimum point. Okay, so since its its amplitude is one half, so if you're going to get the length between the two points, midline and the maximum point, and midline and the minimum point it should always be 0 0.5 units long all right so that means this would be 
okay, from midline up to here, would be also 0 0.5 units long. All right? Okay, so enough details I would like to share. Okay, that's it. So these are actually, this is from easy than challenging, but wait until you're going to graph these functions, all right? So we have two more left. So we're going to discuss that in the next video, all right? So I hope you have learned something uh, in today's video, all right? And I think that will be all for today. See you.